Hello, hello, lads and girls. This is Lord Kicker, and welcome back to another episode of Genshin Impact. Okay, we need to travel far and wide to a village far, far away <laughs> that we actually have located before, so that's pretty good. It's pretty good that I've gotten most of these teleporting spots, and it's raining. Only you could cleanse the corrupt souls of this world. Oh? <gasps> Is it up in this tree? Okay, I got it. <laughs> oh, Achilles. Nice. Oh, I, like, don't see anything when I do that. Oh, that's dumb. Let's just teleport back up there. It was just a dumb thing of me to get that thing. Oh, you have stuff, Granny. I want stuff. Ooh, bamboo shoots. I don't get those too often. Okay, let's talk to Granny. Hi, Granny. We need your help with something. Are there any old books around Kingso Village? You know, from a really long time ago? Oh, looking for ancient texts, are we? Hmm, let me think. There is an old warehouse over there, property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Many books are stored inside. Those that they have no room for at home. In fact, their youngest comes over this way to read sometimes. The Feiyun Commerce Guild's youngest? You must be talking about Xingqiu. Paimon didn't know they had a warehouse here. Let's go take a look. Okay, cool. Okay, so right over there. Let's see how far we can glide. Ooh, there's another one there. Help! Uh, I'm being robbed. It came from that direction. Come on. for a little shock well seeing as it's raining there we go well these are just berries I guess they didn't drop anything okay Let's talk. I've come here to clean the book warehouse plenty of times before. 
This is the first time I've run into these crooks. Are you all right? I am, thanks to all of you. Hey, wait a minute. You're the traveler, aren't you? And you're with... Uh, Lady Gudrun. An honor. Truly an honor. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. I understand that this book warehouse is the property of the Feyun Commerce Guild. Could you advise whether we might find any text relating to the Stove God in this collection? Um, the Stove God? Uh, <coughs> I, I heard that's the Lord of Geo, right? Huh? Really? Yeah, a friend of mine who conducts research mentioned it once before. We use stoves for cooking, and stoves are built from rock. Some people think that the stove is a gift from the Lord of Geo. And that's why they call him the Stove God. Seems logical enough. But do you have any books on the topic? Um, I, uh... I I'm sorry, I'd have to ask the young master about that. Huh. Any questions? Please, ask away. <laughs> hey, it's Chung Yun and Sing Cho. Hello, one and all. Well, I haven't met you before, though. Hey, guys. What are you doing here? I was bored with nothing to do and thought I'd come out this way for a bit of reading. And then I thought, why not bring Chung Yun along, too? <laughs> yes. I'm just along for the ride, really. I see the Yu Hung Kuching is with you. Hmm. Whatever brings you here must surely be a matter of grave importance. Master Xing Cho. If I may be so bold, do you happen to know if there are any texts on the subject of the Stove God among this collection? Since I personally selected which volumes to store here, I do have some recollection of their contents. If my memory betrays me not, there is one volume among them called Demystifying the Legend of Liyue, which mentions the Stove God. Might I take a look? Certainly. If it pleases my lady, I shall lead the way. Sheng. I will take care of things here. You're free to go about your own business. Okay, sweet. You're back! So did you find it? Yes, Master Xingqiu has quite an exceptional memory. Demystifying the Legends of Liyue does indeed mention the Stove God. However, it says the following. <clears throat> the body of the dragon wielded a tail that could eclipse the sun and claws to command fire and teach the ways of wisdom. Receiving the gift bequeathed unto them, humankind cooked food with fire, and thus did they prosper. The body of a dragon? The stories about Rex Lapis say the same thing. That much is true, but this is the only passage in the whole book. If we want to find out more, we'll have to continue our investigation. There's nothing further to discover here. It seems we'll have to look at other options. I come from a long lineage of exorcists, and our family, too, has amassed a number of ancient texts. Now that you mention the Stove God, I seem to recall reading somewhere that this god once appeared at the Guili Assembly. Of course, I can't say if it's true or not. Books are penned by people. All they can do is show what the author was thinking. Everyone's mind is different, so every book on a given topic will give a different account. I apologize that we could not help in a more substantial capacity. Your help thus far is quite ample. Liyue is a vast and rich land. All things that existed here in the past have left their trace. So long as we do not abandon our search, it is sure to bear fruit eventually. Thank you all. We will continue our investigation elsewhere. Ah, oh, hold up. I had a question too. Xingqiu, Chongyun, could you tell me what kind of food you like? Food? Oh, no. Y you're not thinking of taking part in the Masterful Chefs, are you? Uh, yeah, I totally am. What's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Shangling, this is a major event. I beg you, please don't cook anything strange for this competition. What do you mean, strange? <laughs> Mushroom slime stew, to give one example. Okay, fair enough. That dish isn't my most popular. But that's why I'm doing all this research, so I can create some really special dishes to win everyone over. Well, in that case, I like cold food. That's because you can't handle hot and spicy, right? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. 
My tastes are on the mild side. I prefer gentle dishes with minimal seasoning. Soups and stews, vegetables and broth, seafood or freshwater fish, either boiled or steamed. These kinds of dishes I am most partial to. No surprises from the Gugu Agik. Okay, another mild child. Got it. These are just personal preferences, and everyone's are quite different. Are you sure this eclectic mix of opinions will be of any use? Of course! You're my customers, and putting a smile on customers' faces is my calling as a chef. Though Xiangling's market research blade stabs often into the dark, her heart never strays from the noble path. If anyone can win the hearts and minds with their cooking, it's gotta be someone like Xiangling. She's got pure intentions and really cares about the customers. No, where's all this praise coming from? Knock it off, guys. You're embarrassing me. Uh, sorry for holding you all up. That's all I needed to know. Shall we carry on with the investigation now? Over to you, Kuching. Where to next? Hmm. So we've learned the stove god allegedly made an appearance at the Gwaili Assembly. But today that place is largely a wasteland with few traces of human activity. Long Shuen is close by, so let's stop off there on the way over and see what we can find out. Forgive us, for this is where we must part ways. May your journey be a smooth one. Yes, best of luck. If you run into any difficulties, come and find us. We'll be only too glad to help. Thanks, everyone. Let's go! Next stop, Wang Shuen! Not really, because I kind of want to get that Geoloculus first. See if I climb this tree. To be able to get up on the roof. Oh, I can get myself some eggs. Eggs are always good. Hey, wait, this is the one I was looking for, right? I think the one I was looking at was at a bridge. Maybe I'm imagining things. I'm getting a few of these now though, that's good. Like, really good. Also, there's quite a few chilies to be had here. Okay, um... Of round. Here we go. Let's teleport to the inn. And continue on the story a little bit. Okay, it is right there on the top. So let's be careful here. It looks like we can almost walk over there. Nice, got it. Okay, there it is.
Okay, let's teleport up again. But I think that was all of the ones that were here in the inn. Ah. There's the guy we're looking for. Let's talk. Oh, traveler. Who are all these people? Friends of ours. Allow Paimon to introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching. Kuching? Uh, of the Chishing? She's the, um, the, um. Hi. No need to be so nervous. But, Joe? It's not that. It's. I mean. I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy would be a really great chef. So is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. All right. Oh. You know anything? Okay. I see. Legends claim that the stove god once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wang Xuan is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the stove god? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. If you're happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up for something? What? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? Could it be a certain person comes to mind? Yeah, a guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good-looking fella, not too tall. Shh, don't you think he can hear you? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know <laughs> who I mean. The boss told me to take care of him, but this guy, let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking, could you teach me how to make it too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. Oh, yeah, so sure. This is for show. You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. Sure, I can help. Thanks for agreeing to dig out that book. Uh, yeah, I help. All right then. Wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking. Fifty nine. Fifty eight. Hi man, shut up. Sorry for the trouble, traveler. Don't mention it. We're all friends here. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. While Kuching's reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiang Ling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay, shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. Cool. That should do it. Okay, this is the satisfying salad. Let's just make one. And let's talk. All right, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. You got all the steps down, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching, Xiangling, we're back. You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the stove god, 
and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> 60 miles to the northwest is the Gwaili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the stove god descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children. As does a star when it descends into the world, so the stove god went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm. Does that mean there was more than one stove god? Taking the text at face value, that is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the stove god really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? Now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So we've got two leads, but they contradict each other. How do we know which one to believe? By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. Thank you for this text, Yanxiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the traveler. Listen, you've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So, I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Sounds good. Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. I like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. Teaching? Can you spare the time? It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. Nice. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end off this episode here. I do hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.